steal it from you. That's how. That's just how we open the show too now. Yeah. All right. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to the We Cool Podcast. I am your host, Grant Winkles, here with my co-host, Ryan Call, the lovely Ryan Call. How you doing today, Ryan? I'm doing good. You're looking great. Thank We're, you. We are here, present, in the moment, not thinking about the past, not thinking about the future, thinking about, not even thinking about anything, mm -hmm. just just speaking. We're just like a lens. We're just processing information directly through us. All, Maybe filtering it a little bit to get wacky all and I am, a little twisted. All I am is universal and absolute truth. I'm experiencing the universe for what it is and not for what you want it to be. I so, just when these you, are the, uh, facts. Don't care about your feelings. <laughs> um, facts don't care about your feelings. Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to work the Ben Shapiro angle into every single episode now. So good job starting us off right there. Yes. Uh, we are missing Tommy for well, not missing. Are we missing he, him? Yeah. We're lacking Tommy. Yeah. I will say uh, for the fifth consecutive week. Um, my life has never been going better. So things are going great for me too. And every update Tommy gives us. Things are getting worse for him. Yeah. Which it should be. He's on vacation. He's yeah. surfing. That's all he's doing. So he did send us an update. We have some special guests on the episode today filling in for Tommy, but we're going to get to Tommy's uh, quick update real quick. I think this is going to be the last episode without Tommy. So to our Hopefully. listeners, we're sorry. And also, I would like to preemptively apologize for this sound. So... We need to be better about having trigger warnings. Mm -hmm. So we're about to play a clip of Tommy speaking, which does trigger. Yeah, people don't like it. Um, also, this is the We Cool podcast. This is the podcast where we apologize yep. and we demand apologies from those who have wronged us. We also read anonymous listener apologies and apologize for our listeners who uh, send in anonymous Apologies to yeah, us. We might even fuck around and do some uh, weekly celebrity apologies yeah. and some historical apologies. Mm -hmm. On this date, 40 years ago, <laughs> uh, my dad apologized for being drafted into Vietnam. Yep. That's not... He never, he, he, he never, he never apologized. apologized. No, he enjoyed his time over there. It was the <laughs> best vacation he ever had. <laughs> he was like, I would have had to work on the farm otherwise. I have been to Vietnam pretty sick. You know what? My dad, instead of saying otherwise, he says otherwise. <laughs> and he calls dinner supper and it makes me mad. I'm like, what are you from the 1400s? <laughs> I used to be a serf. <laughs> now I'm a government I employee. <laughs> Is your dad a government employee? I don't know. Well, he was when he was in Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> CIA, baby. <laughs> CIA infantry. All right. So we have a... Uh, we have an update from Tommy. Let's just uh, should we just jump right into yeah. it? Hey, what do you what do you say we play that clip from Tommy? I'm for it. Okay. All right, here we go. Hey, hey, Ryan Grant. Hey, how, how you guys doing? I uh, <coughs> I miss you. Uh, I miss you tons. Um, uh, you know, a little life update. Um, for me, is I, I, I ran out all of my money in California, and I unfortunately I had to get a job here at the uh, piss and shit factory. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, it's, it's bad. It's really bad. It stinks. Um, it's terrible. Um, I was having a great time surfing in California, but I spent uh, all my money, so now I'm here. Uh, <laughs> I'm here grinding away at the uh, piss and shit factory. So. Um, <laughs> You know, if you could send money, that would help. You know, uh, I don't know how long I'm going to work here. Um, a lot of feminist organizations are uh, protesting outside the factory because uh, we don't hire enough women here at the piss and shit factory. I'm, I'm just finding all this out. They're outside. Dear they're, God. they're going, we want to work at the piss and it sounds like more shit than piss. I think they're lacking in piss at this factory. I don't hear any piss. It's mostly shit. It's mostly farts. Yeah, it doesn't even sound like it's shit for the most part. It's just... This is... Uh, we haven't heard this yet, and right before the show started, we decided that we weren't going to make any more uh, burping or farting noises. Yeah, because it's gross. <laughs> also, Tommy... It's like Tommy heated what we've said about <laughs> listeners not liking the sound of his voice <laughs> and went, how can I up this? How can I... Make people even angrier when they sound like they <laughs> get a job like at the piss and shit factory. So okay, was that it or is no? That wasn't it. There. Of course, there's more. I'm sure this <laughs> develops a lot more into. <laughs> How long is this? I don't know. California, and I unfortunately I had to get a job here at the uh, piss and shit factory. <laughs> 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 I'm 
here grinding away at the uh, piss and shit factory. So, um, you know, if you could send money, that would help. You know, uh, I don't know how long I'm going to work here. Um, a lot of feminist organizations are uh, protesting outside the factory because uh, we don't hire enough women here at the piss and shit factory. I'm, I'm just finding all this out. They're outside, they're chanting, they're going, we want to work at the piss and shit factory. Hire, hire us at the pit. And you know, I don't know, I'm being told that women can't produce as much shit. I've, I'm staying out of it though. I'm just keeping my head down and I'm just, I'm continuing to work. Um, so, you know, hopefully I can get enough money and I can get back on the <coughs> to Minneapolis so uh, my Venmo is to at Tommy Bear Comedy please send money so I can uh, you know quit my job here um, you know I'm uh, you know I'm working in the shit department hopefully I can get uh, bumped up to the piss department hopefully I can get bumped that explains up to the, it. Okay. Uh, the little, little piss boy uh, area <laughs> so you know uh, miss you guys tons though and uh, I've been listening to podcasts it's great <laughs> so you know Hopefully, I'll see you guys soon. Okay, bye bye. Do you think uh, <laughs> is piss boy? Do you think that's uh, the technical term for that job title, or that's? It sounds like it. Also, I mean, so, it sounds like a a bustling factory life. I yeah, mean, I didn't. I thought I thought manufacturing in America was dead, but apparently not. I'm glad that that job is state American. He's kind of on the same trajectory as you, actually, with the factory work, kind of starting in the, the shit factory. Think... <laughs> Moving up for you, being a driver, is going to be the piss boy thing, right? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't well, put it that right. way. What's that? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. You're okay. No, that's. I think uh, I think you had the right instincts to chime in right there. <laughs> I think it's a... Because what I don't else know, can you say? Yeah, really? I don't know how much wrap-up that segment really actually needs. Tommy... Uh, <laughs> I hope he makes it back. All right, I guess is the thing. He's supposed to be coming back today, but that's that was kind of a distressing. Yeah, he was also asking for money. Yeah, which I don't. Is he asking us for money or the listeners? Because we don't have a yeah. Patreon. I'm not gonna Venmo him either. No. I'll bleep out his Venmo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. Uh, send Tommy money if uh, if you want him back on the podcast. There we go. There like, we go. That's a good compliment. If Tommy gets this, will be like a GoFundMe. If Tommy gets if he can raise if ten thousand dollars, I was gonna say four dollars because oh. I think it's gonna be just as hard for him to raise four dollars <laughs> as it would be to raise ten thousand. Well, we'll see. Yeah, I I guess it, it doesn't matter then. If if he raises any amount of money, we'll let him back on the podcast after he yeah, that splits great. it with us. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, we uh, we wish Tommy well at his new job, and hopefully he's back here soon. But praying for him to make piss boy soon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll get him there. Uh, the more importantly, we have some guests in the studio today with us. Some some real piss and shit boys. Mm -hmm. We got the Piss and Shit Boys from the Dude Absolutely podcast. We got Chris Duke and Alex Petra. What's up, guys? Welcome to We Cool Podcast. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Who's who's the piss boy and who's the shit man? Oh, I'm for sure the shit boy. Yeah. Shit man. boy? Yeah, I'm the shit boy. I'm both. <laughs> and I and I pee like a toddler, so. Yeah. Okay. What what does that mean? I piss a lot. Okay. In throughout his pants. the day. He pees in his pants a lot. That's like. a toddler style. Yeah. Toddler style, dog. Toddler, like, I go gag, toddler style. Gagnum style? Uh -huh. uh, toddler style? I got really drunk last night. I blacked out, went toddler style in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pull my socks up and my pants down when I go pee. Ooh, okay. Did those kids freak you guys out, too? Absolutely. Kids, elementary school when, like... Oh, the teacher yeah. was like, all right, 15 boys go into the bathroom. And then one kid was like, <laughs> pants down as soon as he went through the door. And you're Dude, like, oh, Jeremy. I went to uh, elementary school in Wyoming. And it was like every bathroom break, it was like you were at a baseball game because it was just a trough that no. we would piss in. Yeah. That makes sense. Wait, that was in a school? Did you? Yeah. Know? In that Wyoming. Is... They would just, yeah, go, go piss, kids. Well, as, everywhere west of Minnesota, between Minnesota and Idaho, is just. Absolutely fucked. I've said Wisconsin is the Arkansas of the North. I think mm -hmm. Wyoming is the Arkansas of the true Midwest. Yeah. You guys, you guys don't really get political all that often on Dude Absolutely, do you? Uh, mm. No, we get like weirdly introspective, but it's yeah. mostly just me and Chris is like, here he fucking goes again, and then yeah, yeah, I we get all fired up. I we get, have massive depression, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a, a tiny depression. Like, oh, okay. So small. So small. Like a medium? 
Yeah. Well, it was, well, it was fucking sw- tiny. Uh, oh, okay. Like a little like fucking, a petite. Like a baby's depression. You ever seen a depressed baby? Yeah. Most of them. They cry. You t- yeah, I know. So like What's your depression that? is like a lawn chair. Yeah. Like it's easy to get out of. Yeah, and you're in our like depression a- is like a hammock. Yeah. Oh, nice. I yeah. was going to say like a, a, a like bean a bag. Nice One of those fun. bean bags Ooh, yeah. that's lost its its kind of bounce. You know? By the way, okay, I've been fucking, I'm trying to buy a sofa for my new apartment. They're Just all, get bean bags. Don't buy a sofa. They're ever. all $30,000. <laughs> don't ever buy a I'm, sofa. I'm looking on a Tesla.com. I'm trying to buy a Tesla sofa. <laughs> Not a good start. But then I'm like, I'm like, okay. You get a cheaper one at Sharper Image. Keep going. I went to, I went to, I'm looking at love seats now. I'm looking at love seats. I'm looking at benches, basically. <laughs> that are bold of you, bold of you. <laughs> <laughs> after after everything, <laughs> after after us playing that piss and shit I factory clip. No, here, I'm sorry. you're fine. I'm just fucking with you. Um, but I'm I'm looking at love seats now. I'm sending these to my mom, my girlfriend. They're going. It wouldn't be comfortable. It wouldn't be. Com- yeah, but it's thirty dollars. Well, okay. It's Facebook Marketplace is your best friend for. That's what people keep accounts. saying. Do it. I mean, it's it's. I went to Ashley Home Furniture and they're pressuring me. They're never, like, never buy. <laughs> I bought a bed. I bought a bed, nice ass bed. But then she's like, like the whole time I've. What she doesn't understand. How are you gonna sleep in a bed if you don't have a love seat, dude? I've been sleeping on a fucking ottoman for ten years. Right. So like, barely a bed. What? So she's having to, this lady's having me sit down on, di- lay down on different beds, and she's like. Which one do you like? And I'm like, this one's not bad. And she's like, we don't buy beds because they're not bad. I'm like, you don't understand. I've been sleeping on bricks. So every all this feels nice to me. Right. Well, okay. Yeah. Avoid all furniture stores. The markup is crazy. No, also, but- she told me, she was like, my name's Susan, but just tell them you, you, the old fat chick checked you out. And I was like, I'm not going to tell them that. I'm not going to say, yeah, an old fat woman was the one who sold me the bed. Do you guys give commission based on name? Because some old fat bitch just sold what, me this yeah. bed. Was, that, uh, was she doing the thing where she is clearly so self-conscious about being old and fat that she's like getting out ahead of it? And it's like, lady, no, she's that's not, not what I lead wanted, with every time I meet somebody. She wanted to say that she wasn't old she was, and fat. She was ultra confident. And well, I I was like I, I'm not oh. gonna call you that. And so like I was w- there with my girlfriend, and like my girlfriend like when we're checking out the bed, she like sat down on one and kind of like jumped up and like not jumped up. But she wasn't. Did a little she, my girlfriend isn't seven years old. <laughs> That's she's eight. Like, she's she's like, eight, right? Ryan, this bed looks really good. <laughs> yeah. She popped her, you know, she popped her tush on the. She popped it. And she shit all over the. She bed. popped her pussy on the. <laughs> yeah, she was wet ass pussying all over the bed. No, she. It was a water bed. She like you know. <laughs> You know, though, when you test a bed, you, you, yeah, you know, yeah. you, you do the, that. You, the springiness. Yeah. And then she was like, the lady to my girlfriend was like, what are you, seven years old? No. And she meant it like she was just deadpan. And, and you were like, no, she's eight. <laughs> yeah. I was, like, I was like, how did you fucking know? <laughs> Fuck. I ran, I ran out of the Wait, store. The lady really said this? Yeah. And then my girlfriend was just like. What? Yeah, and so was I was like, I'm not jumping in here. What the fuck? Are you attacking my girlfriend now? What is but she meant it as a joke, but it didn't come off as a joke. This is a bold furniture sale. She was, person. dude. It yeah. was it was a high it was high pressure. Yeah. I, also, she was like, What kind of bed are you looking for? And I meant to say memory foam, but I said Tempur Pedic, and she was like, Well, our Tempur Pedic start out at five thousand dollars. <laughs> and I was like, like a just like a Ottoman, I'll buy an Ottoman then. I don't know. Do you know what an ottoman is? Yeah, I sleep on one. <laughs> they used to have an empire. Now it's just barely even a bed. <laughs> I was going to say, an ottoman, it's got to suck sleeping on that, people constantly flipping you over to get their Wii console out of the ottoman. Yeah. Well, <laughs> dude, it truly that's literally what it is, though. So it flips out, and then there's like a mattress for barely a baby. Like, it's a crib. I live in a crib. <laughs> you are a small Wait, you know, MTV man. Cribs. Yeah, MTV <laughs> Cribs. What's up, guys? This is my crib. It you, sucks. Are you literally a crib. Are you talking about a futon? It's it's like a mix between a futon and an ottoman. It used to have like a mattress pad that was like I don't know three inches thick, and then my roommate let me use his this like queen mattress that I don't know is from like the nineteen tens. We're in the roommate corner now. Well, yeah, it, it, he was very nice of him to let me use that, but it is. Oh, this worn, is off brand for roommate corner. I know it is worn the fuck out though. So like my back has just been, and I'm working a hard job. So like I sleep on this bed. Anyways, I'm excited to move into the dude. Apartment. Your life, man. Yeah. <laughs> You can't get canceled anymore because there is no... No, but I can get fired from my job, <laughs> which in a lot of ways is scarier than getting canceled. See, Because next... here's the thing. You get canceled in comedy. Okay, maybe you can find a new audience if you have no morals. If you get fired from your job, you can't go to like 
work at an alt-right UPS. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's just UPS. It's called so Daily Mail. No, it's not, because we have a great union. We're liberal. No, maybe? that's USPS. That's where you go Fuck! for the alt-right stuff. <laughs> yeah. The FedEx, I think, is would maybe be the alt-right. Yeah, speaking well, of fetishes. Or Amazon. Amazon Prime. Daily Mail? Ooh, you got some fucking... What's Daily Mail? Isn't that Ben Shapiro's, like, website? I think that's uh, Daily Mirror. Or, oh, I don't know. Daily Mail is the British one. Yeah. Ah, mm-hmm. never mind. Sorry. That's okay. That's British Ben Shapiro. Yeah, they're like, okay. Fucks don't care about the <laughs> yeah. I'm Ben Shapiro. Oh, I'm Ben Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to play some footy on the newspaper today. <laughs> We're playing footy with your liberal newspaper. <laughs> with what? your Tory news. <laughs> debate me. Come on and debate me. Why don't you come on over here? I'm wearing a big curly wig and I'm British. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on Joe Rogan 17 times. <laughs> See, my is black, black on black crime. <laughs> In it. In it. It's a big problem, isn't it? <laughs> Sick and tired of these fucking hired crises actors. George Soros <laughs> turning the fucking frogs gay. <laughs> Dude, what if Ben? I'm just like Sir Ben Shapiro. He's like sweeping like a hallway. Oh, I He's... like Ben Shapiro as a chimney sweep. Yeah. Dust mites don't care about the boomers. <laughs> ben, they just go in the nose. <laughs> ben Shapiro looks like that kid that, that se- told you as a kid, my parents could say I could tell you to get off my property. Oh, yeah, he fucking does. Yeah, oh, he yeah. was definitely like junior high suit and tie. Junior high oh, suit and tie. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a vibe. Yeah, Wear, just wearing a he, he yeah, briefcase, for clothes briefcase for, in seventh grade. He got to know the inside of a lot of lockers in mm-hmm. junior high. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for yeah sure. he was not an athlete. He doesn't strike me as someone that was, no. like, shooting shooting. Yeah, he hoops. wasn't fielding ground balls. He was no. he yeah. was using a magnifying glass on a bug catcher. He's reading Ayn Rand as he's playing outfield. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he looks like a... Sitting down cross-legged. Yeah, yeah. Cu- pulling apart the fucking dandelions. <laughs> you guys see these? That dude sucks. Looks like he, he called dude, teachers. that's a good take. I know. Called teachers by their sweet. first name and would ask them about the news that they saw this yeah. morning. Ask them about their personal lives. <laughs> Reading What's anything good? What's your favorite blend of coffee? <laughs> so it, it rained last night, and which we needed. We needed that. We needed that rain. <laughs> right, Tom? <laughs> Can I meet your wife? <laughs> I was such a teacher's pet. This is this is hitting home for me. Up until like seventh or eighth grade, I was like, I, I don't care about friends. I just want. Damn, dude. Mm-hmm. I didn't connect with teachers until high school. I think I've talked about the walkout I led, right? I I don't know if you Excuse have. Me? Yeah, okay. he's got a deep union organizing past. Fuck yeah, baby! In uh, 2011, the Wisconsin whatever the fuck they were trying to take away collective bargaining rights from teachers and uh i worked at the school store so i had access to like the intercom so like we organized a walkout in support of our teachers and i went on the intercom and was just like hey if you don't if you're against this fucking bullshit we're leaving now and uh we left and we like marched down to the city capitol building and i i got on the local news they spelled my last name wrong and then they also like they interviewed me and took shitty ass sound bites. Where there's a sound bite of me just being like, "Our teachers said that uh, they want us to do this, basically." Which <laughs> I did. I never said those words. Right. But, but they like they fucking cut around smear campaign. It yeah, it, they so, smeared you. And then I got suspended, not because we walked out, but because I uh, used the intercom in an inappropriate way, and my principal uh, was like, uh, "It could have been." Uh, a school shooting or something. I was like, over no, the wait, intercom. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then my fucking, uh, my Wisconsin history teacher, John Kinville, one of the best fucking teachers I ever had, uh, when I was like suspended, apparently he was like, uh, Ryan Call's not here today. Uh, and he's suspended for like the coolest reason I've ever heard of a On the intercom? student being suspended. Yeah. He, nice. And then he got suspended. Oh, shit. <laughs> no way. No, I don't know. <laughs> he didn't say that to the class. But um, Have yeah, that was. Sold. Dude. I was a fucking, I had a good high school. You were the Jimmy Hoffa of your high school. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty rad. And I buried myself (laughs) by quitting comedy and working at UPS. I mean, it's it's like upsetting me that you're talking about quitting comedy in such a serious way. Like, it's just, 
I don't believe you. But it's so easy to do right now. Yeah. Because well, I mean, we've all quit comedy. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, that's, also, uh, I really am getting the itch, though. How yeah. long do you would you have to do comedy to make one hundred thousand dollars a year? I don't know, three thousand years of maybe doing comedy. <laughs> you can close. maybe make a hundred thousand dollars a year somehow. Is that yeah. is that thirty dollars a year or something? Dude, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the rate that I'm at. So yeah. When I was when I was in full time com, if I would have because this year I I'd pretty much start before COVID started. Before it kicked off, before they kicked off, kicked the ball to COVID, mm. and you know they were saying the national anthem, and then we we're like, oh, coronavirus. Um, we welcomed it into our lives, yeah, exactly. Which was a mistake. And in people, hindsight. people were coughing and kneeling because they were coughing. Mm-hmm. You know, they couldn't stand up mm-hmm. because they were weak because yeah. of coronavirus. Um, before that happened, though, I was on the road pretty much every weekend, and like in a month, I would probably make maybe fifteen hundred dollars. So like, it's it's enough. enough. That's like not even twenty thousand dollars a year. I know. Or I could just drive a fucking truck, and make a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, a but year. you get to do what you love. That's the. I like throwing boxes. <laughs> yeah. I it's will say that's the best tight. part of working at UPS. I've never had a job where, when you get frustrated, you can just throw whatever. Mm-hmm. I've had I threw a box thirty feet the other day. I've had boxes explode. Now you're just bragging about how hard you can throw boxes. Dude, yeah. it's fucking awesome. I, as a waiter, I could never do that. As a stand-up, you can't throw the this microphone is, at a heckler. This you know? is going to be the thing that gets you fired from, from UPS. You're talking about <laughs> destroying <laughs> people's property. And I'm on the safety commission. <laughs> By the way, my brother did text me, and he said they 100% gave you that job because nobody else wanted it. No, I think they respect It's hazing. They're hazing you. No. You're being harassed. I think I'm the hazer. I think I'm hazing them. Ryan got uh, tapped by the union to head up the safety commission. Well, I'm not heading it up, but I'm on the safety commission. After he worked there for, like, one day. Like, three days. (laughs) They were like, do you want to be on the safety commission? And I was like... This feels like a promotion. There's a group Absolutely. of people like poking their heads out from behind the shelf, laughing at you, little rascal style. You're getting little rascal Dude, style. I, I didn't get right now. There's a pile of boxes somewhere that, with a forklift, they pull it out, and there's a meeting room, and they all just watch you on the cameras. Dude, I did get bull. Okay, here's the thing. I'm not getting hazed, but I did get bullied by one of the drivers this week. Uh, he came in. <laughs> I'm like stalking his his uh, truck, and then he comes in. He he looks at me and he goes, uh, like, real deadpan. He goes, are you dyslexic? And I was like, what? He's like, are you dyslexic? And I was like, no, I don't think so. He's like, well, sometimes the boxes are supposed to be on this shelf and they're on that shelf. And I was like, well, you know, you run out of room sometimes. And then I think he was just fucking with me. But he said it so deadpan that I was just like. Are you just like, And then he was like. Why is that the conclude? How about, like, do yeah, you know wh- how to organize the boxes? What, Start what, there. What was you, I should have been like, when he was like, are you dyslexic? I should have been like, I don't know. Are you autistic? What the fuck yeah. kind of question? And then he didn't ask my name. He, he Sounds like that. he would have been like, yes, yes, I am. That's why I'm speaking so bluntly. Maybe he's dyslexic. <laughs> and he was just yeah. like trying to find someone else. Some you know? common ground. Are yeah, I'm trying dyslexic? to bond. <laughs> Try to start my own you. Well, it was weird because he's like, are you dyslexic? And I was like, no. And then I was like, well, just tell me what I can do to make your job easier. I'm not trying to fuck up your job. And then he was like, what's your name? And I told him. Which, weird You were sequence. definitely getting hazed. But then, uh, then he was like, well, you're doing a good job otherwise. <laughs> I was like, I wouldn't have known that yeah. based on how you started this conversation. Well, at least he did clear the air. Yeah. I get, that's a good feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he, Plus, he was, he was like, "Fuck, it's the safety commission guy." I just realized. Also, I was telling the other the other guys on the line. I was like, "Yeah, that fucking driver asked me if I was dyslexic the other day." And every other person on the line was like, "Yeah, bro, we heard him ask you that." You should start like a grassroots campaign to introduce like some safety equipment that makes absolutely no sense, but yeah. just try to like permeate it. Like everyone has to wear life jackets in this place now. <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> what are those? How um, it does. What are those those uh, those bands that people like connect to trees and then they walk on them? Slackline, oh, yeah. Slackline. Introduce slacklines. Yeah, instead of having <laughs> to the workflow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're we're improving our balance when we carry these ninety pound packages. Everybody, take your shoes off. <laughs> this is a barefoot activity, dude. It is so awesome though. Fucking when you get a bunch of packages and then you don't have time to get them in the truck yet. So then what you do is you just. Throw them. You throw them off the conveyor belt, and you're like, I'm a man's man right now. Mm -hmm. In this moment in time, I'm a man's man. It just sounds like you love your job, which is... I do like it a lot. That's awesome. I mean, it sucks ass, but I like it. You know, I mean, you you had to make a tough choice to you know stop doing comedy when there was no comedy going on. Yeah, but then you had to be like, I can't get on stage. Yeah, it was a tough choice. (laughs) That was tough. It was. I could do this, or I could try to do my act over a fucking Zoom call, which. I did one of those, yeah, and immediately was like, 
this is never going to work for me. So I, think, here. I think we've said this before, but if you're going to do a Zoom call or Zoom comedy show, you got to do a character work or you got to have some kind of bit. If you're just doing your act, yeah, that's not the way to go. So I'm so fragile emotionally that, mm-hmm. like, that immediate – I, I need the feedback, and it's like even if I'm bombing, that still kind of fills some part of your ego where you're like, you know, I mean, it's obviously not great for it, but when you don't get that like face to face, I just I felt so alone in that moment, and I yeah. was like, God, my dad was totally right. Uh, this is <laughs> not the right thing for me, dude. Uh, see, here's the thing though, working at U, I would argue working at UPS is better than doing Zoom comedy shows 100%. because yeah. these dudes. Mm-hmm. These dudes, they laugh at everything. They're also really funny guys, and they don't give a shit. So you can just say whatever, and they're like, hell yeah, dog, that's fucking hilarious. Yeah, yep. you you went from being like, like depressed about the fact that you couldn't be funny to being the funniest person at a place full of people that you respect for their funny. Yeah, and they also all work. I'm on a good line. Everybody works hard. And you're on but the fucking hold safety on. commission. This is, going? But this is where I... I where I, I have a little bone to pick. Allow me to pick. Pick that bone. Um, you were kind of, I mean, not to suck your dick, but... Uh, I'll suck his dick. Uh, <laughs> okay. okay, just come on over here. <laughs> um, you were kind of there in the comedy scene. So, like, I, it's it's like a lateral move. You were... you were, I disagree, because here's the thing. Well, most, you have to disagree. No, we fucking I'm, hated you. Most <laughs> people in the comedy scene, I fucking don't respect on a personal level. What the fuck?! <laughs> Not okay. That's not. Apologize true. That's now. Not true. That's, that's not hard, true. That's hard but there to are hear. Like a lot. Of, there are a lot. There's a big cream puff fucking mentality in the open mic comedy scene community where it's like I'm not. I didn't get five. Go at, off. At Go this. off, King. I I haven't been up at Comedy Corner Underground in uh, uh, two weeks, and it's like yeah, that's fucking how this industry works. I, I hate your impression of me, but go off. <laughs> Keep going. That is how you sound when you don't get up <laughs> at the at the room that you run. <laughs> I haven't put myself up. In I three didn't weeks. give myself five minutes. Man. Why didn't I do that? Do, I I guess I I'm, I wasn't around for those things, you know. Like I I would I didn't go to the CCU mic that often. Um, yeah. But like, at the other mics, is that is that? I mean, do people complain like that all the time? I guess I'm not the guy that gets complained to. It was actually me. It would be me complaining, oh, okay. going. <laughs> I want to go up <laughs> earlier in the lineup. I, just, I, I mean, it I was know. just me and Ryan complaining to each other yeah. about not putting each other up on yeah. Comedy Corner Underground. Yeah. Well, yeah, man. You think about like Nordic. Like I, I had people that would get. I just they would just you know, be an and they would <laughs> complain about not. You can keep that one in. <laughs> <laughs> no. Will fucking kill himself if he hears that. <laughs> okay. Also, I will say, I'm being I'm being kind of facetious. I do I do like most of the people in the comic. Community. Yeah, but that it, there no, is this but, attitude though because they've we're on opposite there, ends there. There are know. people who have never worked a fucking actual job who do comedy, and it's either like daddy's money or whatever the fuck. And yeah, okay. like I don't respect those kind of people because it's like you've never had a real job, and now you're just like coming into this and you're expecting way too much. Like nothing is promised. In any job, but especially comedy, you can work your fucking ass off and still not be funny enough to do whatever in comedy, or yeah. be funny yeah. enough and still not get it. Yeah, just just because of circumstances mm-hmm. outside of your own control. Whereas this job, everything's in my control, and it's also seniority based and kind of it's more of a meritocracy too. Okay, I'm just, you're good I'm at just your job. Saying, I'm like, saying, I mean, you know, you're I mean, you're coming back to stand up when it's back. I'm calling it right now. Maybe it's an easy when, prediction to make. Well, but that's the other thing is like open mics will always be there. So if you ever feel like doing stand up, yeah. you can always. Go. It's like karaoke. Like if you're not a fucking pop star, you can still go and sing. Like well, it doesn't negate. Yeah, but you're I not, know not able to do stuff. But I know I don't that you it's... you don't want to interact with stand up comedy in that way. You want to be working. Yeah, right. if I was going to do it, I would want to, because I feel like I'm good enough that and I could fucking... You are. That's if, just the frustrating thing right now is like, I, I mean, I understand why you're doing it, yeah. but it's like, there just isn't work. Yeah. There, oh, well, and also, I don't know, from like a, my own like perspective, I feel like I've accomplished a fucking enough where I'm like happy with what I did, and that if that's where I leave it, that's fine, you know? Boo. <laughs> that sucks. Because also that's the thing with stand up is it tricks you into thinking like okay you accomplish things that you when I moved you're to never Minneapolis, happy you're never yeah, happy exactly. even when if I, you get 
bigger when I, things. When I moved to Minneapolis, I remember telling myself, man, if I if I could work at CCU and House of Comedy and Joke Joint when it was open, like that would yeah. be I, I couldn't even fathom that. And then that happened. Me too. I got and, those things and I was miserable. Yeah, still. and you don't even you because comedy tricks you into okay, I got this, now it's on to the next thing. On I can do this, now it's on to the next thing. And you just have to keep working harder and harder and harder, and you're not really making Yeah. The money that you're putting the effort in doesn't translate to the money that you're making which is incredibly frustrating especially when you're not 22 years old and you're just like i can live off of fucking bread and drink stamps i don't give a fuck or drink tickets you know alex and i worked our fucking asses off over at the at nordic and yeah to no avail i mean like we we had a couple good shows but yeah to your point and that is a great feel like i shouldn't i do want to clarify too i'm not trying to just be down on stand-up like it's the dumbest thing you could do as well it is the dumbest thing you could do (laughs) but There are there are very rewarding parts of it, you know, yeah. and parts of it are things that you achieve. Parts of it are um, becoming someone that people look up to in the scene. Parts of it are, you know, just clout. Well, and that's the problem. Also, seeing people grow is, is yeah. rewarding. You, you, but that's that's the problem with like using uh, or making stand up uh, a career option is like uh, because it's fulfilling in every or in other ways. You're willing to make concessions and like the things that are literal needs for you. So yes. like we would have. You know, we would do the the showcase at Nordic, and like ninety fucking people would show up, and they'd spend like two grand or more buying beer and everything. It was like a fucking great night, and then I would walk away with like twenty bucks, and I was yeah, like, "This that's is not, yeah." But you would walk away that night though, feeling great, like a, because you yeah, I feel like but, I made a yeah, million bucks. That's and something then the that next morning I'm like, oh yeah, this something is not... you you glossed over in your description of everything you like is the actual real thing that we all like is like the feeling of crushing oh, that's yeah. that's some yeah. that's the drug the part only of it. thing that's the thing that you like are are drawn yeah. back to i will say this the only thing that has made me want to come back to stand up <clears throat> you know even though physically it's not really an option right now is when i was in stand up you get it, it's one of those things where like the more you learn the more you realize you don't fucking know so the funnier you get the real the more you start to just question everything and start to think, well, is this hack? Am I hack? Mm-hmm. And is this even funny? And once like COVID happened and you couldn't do stand up, I remember watching just clips of me doing stand up and being like, fuck man, I was like genuinely very good and I shouldn't have doubted myself. But the reality of it is like, okay, well you can be really good and still just toil away for 10 years. And then maybe you get a Conan and then you're still doing Bismarck, North Dakota you know, driving six yeah. hours to make maybe four hundred dollars. This is the difference between me and you is that I'm right now. I'm, I'm happy with that. Like, yeah, I, I think working the road and stuff will be fun, especially if you got a Conan. Like at some point. Yeah, I know? mean the thing though. So when I first started working the road, I was working it with my friends, which is amazing. And then like you know, I was still like you know, Brody, Mike Brody, who's a great comic in Minneapolis, would would bring me on the road, and that was always really fun. But then sometimes you're doing gigs where it's just you, and yeah. like you are just. It's not even lonely. It's just yeah. like, man, this fucking sucks driving just, six hours to make $200. Or or even when you're working in town and you're just with a headliner you don't know and are yeah. connecting with and you're just like, I'm just spending this whole weekend basically in a dark corner of this comedy club yeah. on my phone. You know what I would compare doing the road in like a real rural environment is like, uh, you know, the cantina scene in Star Wars where you walk into this completely alien environment <laughs> and someone comes up to you and they go, He doesn't like you. Yeah, they go, <laughs> He doesn't like you. And you're like, Okay, well, I have to do stand up. And then he goes, And I don't like you either. <laughs> you know, and you're like, Okay, well, here's a joke about how I fuck like my dad fought in Vietnam. <laughs> they're like, We hated that. We support the troops, even if they didn't want to go to war. Yeah. You're like, Could you turn the Fox News down just like a little bit yeah. while I'm performing? They're like, No, we don't like you. Yeah. Well, that was we did a we did a show out. Like, There's people playing music that you've never heard in your life. You're like, what the fuck even is that? We did a show like west. Is that a human? West of Little Falls. I don't even fucking know where it was. Oh, you're talking about yeah, and uh, 100%. Oh, you're talking about West Little Falls. Yeah. No, no, no. I think you did it too. Twelve Mile. Yeah. I don't remember okay. where where so, was for Ryan Middendorf's show. Yeah. No, I never did that show. Okay, so I don't uh, think. First did of I? all, I opened. Um, and nobody hosted. So, like, <laughs> great, a, great start. We're in a full bar. Nobody, like, everyone showed up for the show, but nobody in that place had ever been to a comedy show in their life. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. You know what I mean? It was like that vibe where you're like, oh, you don't know the, there's like an unspoken etiquette of like, maybe face me. You know? <laughs> like, let's start there. 
which normally the host would take care of right. that. So Dude, like, my favorite is when everyone is facing away except one lady who thinks that you're having a conversation with her. Yeah. So then you do a joke and she goes, yeah, I used to live in Wisconsin. <laughs> and you're, you're like, like Darla, shut, shut the shut fuck up. up. Yeah, right. So like, I, oh, and there was no like intro. Like it's just like I got on stage and then some guy in the back just like dimmed the lights. Yeah, at and least then, he did that. Dude, the okay, sorry, go well, ahead. Well, he like dimmed the lights in the back of the room. So like there was that weird they didn't have lighting like, mm -hmm. you know, like so it was like just this like podcast the, studio. Well, so it was like the front half of the room was still <laughs> lit all the way and then the back was it. So right. it was like the people playing darts were like, "What the fuck, man?" Yeah. And then I just had to start talking about my crank, mm -hmm. which I didn't You had to. to. Interesting yeah. choice to start. But I was yeah. like, these people get it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wasn't good. And then I, so I just, I mean, ate so much shit for 10 minutes Dude. and then got off stage and fucking whoever else was, I don't even know who else was there, but somebody said. Andrew they Witzel, were, Tom Chilstrom. Yeah, yeah, I came walking past and they were like, good set. And I was like, fuck off. Like, <laughs> you think that was a good set <laughs> yeah. for me, you and motherfucker? Like, I, I can't. I'm never doing this again. Dude, the only thing that's worse than just going up cold like that is when you're like in a rural environment and then the owner's like, so I'm going to all go up and bring you up. And they go up and they go. <laughs> They go, hey, everybody, and everybody's like, fucking Randy, yeah! <laughs> and he's like, so go we we got a freaking comedy show tonight, and uh, I before we kick it off, I just want to tell you a joke about these three nuns, and they they walk into a bar, and they're not, they weren't, anyway, so your comic tonight, he's, <laughs> it's Brian Kale. <laughs> Brian, are you here? Brian, come on. And then... You have to. They didn't tell you how to get on stage, right. you know. So then you yeah. have to like you're climbing over a fucking table, yeah. and then you get up there. I've, I've told this story like a thousand times, but um, so we 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 knew right away, right after Alex went, it was like, okay, we're we're battling the crowd. Yeah. So always great when it's a fucking fight. So I was thinking and an hour and a half away. Yeah. When you you're know? you're there to give these people entertainment, and they have the attitude of make us fucking laugh. Yeah. I yeah. fucking dare yeah. you. Yeah. So 100%. I um I was at first I was gonna do like a lot of clean jokes, and I was like fuck that, and so I I have this joke uh, where I talk about sucking my friend's dick. Yeah, and how unfortunate it is when they don't shower before you start to suck yeah. their dick. So as soon as I say, you know, when you're about to suck your friend's dick, all of those guys at the bar that were facing the bar, all of them turned. As if they to go, say, we with, know, yeah. As if with their no, they were like, <laughs> we never sucked dick. That's bullshit. Like they yeah. they looked furious. Yeah. And then so, the the <laughs> real kicker for this show, and I've done a few shows where they've done this before. My own shows. This happened on on uh, the show that I had you on. Uh, the owner does not communicate beforehand that he wants an intermission. Oh, great! But then midway through the show, after. 40 minutes of straight up bombs. He's like, <laughs> maybe we, we need to get more beer in these people. Yeah, yeah. So then he's like, let's do an intermission. So then the host has to go up there and be like, yeah, we're going to, you know, do a little quick intermission, which is for everyone else, a free pass to not pay attention for the next. Half. Wonderful. Yeah. So then it was like, everyone ate even more shit. The second half, it well, was, I mean, what's well, great when the owner makes the executive decision of, um, okay, so there's no energy in the room. Yeah. I think we should somehow let this negative amount of energy that isn't in the room out. Right, right, yeah. Let them talk for a little bit. Well, and, and it was funny because he walked up to all the comics and he was like, can I get you guys anything? And we were like, the show? Can we start the show <laughs> yeah. again? That would be How's nice. that? Should we do some fucking apologies? Well, let's do, um, so yeah, I think uh, we got we got a good preamble there. That turned into a real nuts and bolts on comedy right there. Not expecting that. Um I'm I'm doing stand up uh, this weekend, doing 25 minutes. That is really? going to be a challenge, I think, but it'll be fun. Like we're going are you to hosting or are you no, featuring. I think I think Tommy and I might be headlining. Ooh. Oh, in Fargo, in Fargo. Fuck yeah, yeah baby, fun. which at, is crazy. At the, or... at the cellar in, oh, okay. in yeah, Fargo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that'll be uh, Saturday, September 12th. You know, missed it by one day. Would really like to have my first headlining gig on 9-11 because, uh, you know, that's just boosting your funny, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, but, yeah, Saturday the 12th at the Cellar in Fargo. We might have some Fargo listeners, actually. We had John Kennedy on yeah, the show last yeah. week. So, um, yeah, I'm excited for that. Uh, but, yeah, we have a uh, – we're going to try a new segment today, see how this goes. Um, 
it, this is a this is a news a national news apology that we have coming in today. Um, uh, September third, as of September third, here's our headline: Tampa City Council unanimously votes for official apology for city's racist past. <laughs> What about the racist present and future? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, okay, this is Apologize great. Apologize for Fred Durst. <laughs> <laughs> is he from Tampa? Yeah. Damn, good poll. Is nice. Limp Biscuit from Tampa? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. That's such a Florida band. It is crazy how Tom Brady's there for three months and all of a oh, sudden... Oh, no, he's from Jacksonville. Because he's, uh, what does he say uh, in one of the songs? I actually listen to Limp Biscuit because they're <laughs> fucking rad, but also... <laughs> He says, then why were you besmirching Fred Durst at the beginning of this segment? Because he's the worst part of <laughs> Their music fucking shreds, dude. It's Fred socks. Keep going about Tampa. Sorry. No, you were you were talking about Jacksonville. He's actually. from Jacksonville, but Tampa, I mean Tampa and Jacksonville are. It equals. would be really funny if Tampa apologized for a thing Jacksonville did. <laughs> sorry about like, Jacksonville being racist. Yeah, we're real sorry that they did what they did. Yeah, Is they, it, go ahead. Well, I, I was just, the, they, I think this sounds ridiculous on its face, but it's actually a good idea. This is, like, if they would have done this in the 60s, if every city and government would have just come out and been like, yeah, we're racist, sorry, instead of just being like, race, racism doesn't exist. We're that was, like, the official government line we're until, like. solving it with jobs. Yeah, <laughs> which they weren't. At all. Just a lie. Right. Also, no jobs. Also, taking signs off of drinking fountains doesn't make you not racist. <laughs> uh, okay, if racism still exists, then why did we put a rug over it? Uh, <laughs> you fucking idiot. So here's, here's the official, um, here's the official apology. This is great. I mean, we should try it. Try and get them on the pod. The city council <laughs> apologizes for any and all past participation in sanctioning segregation and systematic discrimination of African Americans. Which, like I said, this is legit. This is like the least that they, you could do. Yeah. But s- cities are still not doing it. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I do think that this is healing some of the. Or it could have healed. It seems a little bit late now, Tampa, gotta be honest, and everybody else. But. Like, we should have been dealing with this stuff so long ago. Yeah, this and is not a step in the right direction. They're just tying their shoes. At this point, <laughs> yeah, this you know? is like this is like turning towards the It's also the right crazy direction. that Florida's leading the charge against racism. <laughs> I know. And still has crocodile problems. Okay. Well, I do like to imagine one of the city council members taking a Ku Klux Klan hat off and then going. <laughs> It's like, been too long. Just, yeah. <laughs> so just, here, here's we the... Got, we got to apologize for all of our weight when we were racist. This is, we, we ain't no racist no more. I'm a, I'm a different man now. I'm a different man. I ain't my daddy boy. I, I ain't no racist no more. We done... He's missing eight teeth. We ain't no racist no more. Wait, is that me? Because I'm missing eight teeth. <laughs> Are you missing eight? Really? I thought you were just missing the one. Like a, no, that's a lot. Like a tiny dog. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, there's a lot. Okay, uh, new new character guy. He's not missing any teeth. In fact, he's got extra teeth. He's going, I got eight teeth. I got twenty two teeth in my mouth, and I can barely even talk. But we are just sick of this racism. We ain't doing it no more racism. We we all we care about here is a, a Tom Brady here. And then we do it with the Florida Gators and the I, Florida State. Don't forget football to plug team. your mini golf course that you also. Yeah, own. we also own a mini golf course and it is infested with alligators. Uh, and these alligators come, they they eat these, they eat the black, the balls. You are Bobby Boucher's dad and water boy right now, Mr. Durst. Uh, these yeah, are these yeah, are all <laughs> these are all very interesting updates. Any I, any word on the new Limp Bizkit album? Yeah, I do. I will say this. We, we breaking shit. We breaking. We breaking down systematic racism. <laughs> That's what we doing. Goddamn boy. We breaking down fucking shit out of racism. So thank you for being here, Mister Durst. Uh, How about that? So this is what's awesome. Catch me outside. Um, this is what's we awesome. We from Florida down here. <laughs> down in Florida, we from Florida. Down from Florida, we from Florida, and we don't be a racist no more. I don't know how you Yankees do it up north, but down in Florida, we from Florida. We from Florida down here, <laughs> and we done, we done with that racism. I just wanted to just say, Alabama. <laughs> You've inspired us to stop her racism as well. Just a guy who's a fucking rock farmer in Alabama. <laughs> but they don't like each other. Fuck you, Alabama. We, 
ending and racism is all oh, damn. We ain't voting for no more Donald Trump. He talking about draining the swamp. We need the swamp. That we have a swamp based economy down Where am here. I going to put my fan boat? How am Donald I gonna, Trump? Where am I going to sell these alligators? <laughs> I sell the alligator to a guy from New York. He flush it down, and then it, it get in a subway down up there, <laughs> down up there, down up there in the, the New York State city, the city of New York State. I live in Tampa Bay, the least racist place in America, and I never went to a school ever. Moments. Uh, the school is the swamp. Moments before the vote. <laughs> I live on a fan boat. Moments before the vote, the mayor thanked his city city council member colleagues and the city's Jewish community. Yeah, I'd like to thank <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody on the city council, especially the, the people who own the Do you know do you know who Mr. Goldman over here? You know who? And I ain't talking about the Catholics who <laughs> have also been misaligned by our people. Here, Mr. Listen. Schwartz or Mr. Goldman. Thank in, you. In January, he winks at him. He in goes, January, the we mayor love the little curly things in your hair. <laughs> the 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 mayor vowed to build. I love their silly little hats that they wear on their heads. That is one of my favorite things about the people. And I will say, I support Israel, <laughs> but in a in a non aggressive way. I support the state of Israel, but I also support we support our Palestinian people who live here somehow. <laughs> Big change, big change in geography for these people. They're coming from a mostly like a, a arid place, and then they're coming down here. They live in a swamp with me. I I say, come and live in my on my fan boat. <laughs> it's twelve feet wide. I could have a, a thousand people on my fan boat. You, you wanna have a craw cookout? <laughs> I eat craw daddies raw. <laughs> I eat them raw with the shell. And I grow more. Mm, that I, shell the best part. I've grown, shell more the best part. I've grown more teachers to eat them craw daddies. <laughs> I, put, I put the raw and craw, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I developed an allergy to shellfish <laughs> because I've been eating them raw and you ain't supposed to do that like that. It's called going craw dog. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry. So he apologized. But listen, the and shout out to the Jews. <laughs> shout out to the city council and the Jews and the Jewish population who lives here. I guess. But listen, listen. Moments before the vote, but not the mayor the thanked <laughs> the mayor thanked the council member colleagues and the city's Jewish community. He vowed to build racial bridges after uttering an anti-Semitic slur in a phone conversation in January. Oh my god! I feel like see this. This was this was a misphrase. They they misquoted him where they said he was going to build racial bridges, yeah. and he actually said he went shout out no more racists, shout out city council, shout out Jews, and we will be building more racist bridges. And I'm sorry that I was racist up I until like, yeah, I was racist this year. <laughs> I was racist two weeks ago, but now. I ain't racist no more. Here's the thing, though. This dude is untouchable because he's black, and his ah, daughter fuck. is gay. What? Yeah. Whoa. So here, this isn't just about being black, Gudez said of his apology and reconciliation effort. This is for everybody. His daughter is gay, he said, and it took his religious family some time to accept that fact, but they did, and he is glad of it. I'm so happy you're glad <laughs> of the fact that you decided to... We allow her... To, to live. Yeah. It's, yeah. Man, I like to imagine. And like, that. I guess Jews are cool now. Yeah. I guess. I, we were, I do feel bad with the voice I was doing now that I know he was black. Well, you were clearly portraying Fred Durst there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If he okay. was the mayor. So Also, there are black people that sound like that. For sure. Like just being in the South, you can. Have you seen that guy? Whoa. That, like Sons of Confederates? No. You ever see that on the news? Uh uh-uh. Okay, so there's uh there was this this black dude that was in favor of the Sons of Confederates. So like he didn't want them to take the Confederate flag down. Oh, was he statues. wasn't he adopted or something? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, I saw that. Oh, that's tough. My whole family's white. I went to all white school. Like, it sounds racist, but he's a black guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, so this is uh, coming in hot, right? There's a this is a melting pot down here in Tampa because the next paragraph, Councilman Chairman Council Chairman Guido Maniscalco. <laughs> hey, I'm a Guido hey, Maniscalco. Hey. I'm trying to chairman over here. <laughs> Keep it down with the Jews and the blacks. I'm, I'm trying to chairman I'm over the, here. I'm the, I'm the freaking head of the chain. <laughs> and 
So it would be a real shame if the city council went to apologize for its racist history, wouldn't it? Especially when they talk about the Italians. The son of Sicilian and Cuban immigrants. At the end of the day, we're all Americans. My we're, at the end of the day, we're all Italian Americans. <laughs> My grandfather went to Cuba, opened up a casino. Then bad things happened in Cuba. He could have a casino. So then we came to the beautiful Tampa Bay. You come to me on this day, the day of my gay daughter's wedding, <laughs> and tell me it's okay for her to be gay? That is very progressive. Thank you for saying that. Be careful, you end up with an alligator head in your back. <laughs> Sold Listen, to me by Fred Durst. <laughs> We're raising alligator hit men, <laughs> and they will come after you. If you're not careful, they're very slow, and it's hard for them to hold a pistol. I like to imagine, like, the black and the Jewish and Cuban community being like, yes, racial unity, this is all so good. And then the Italians tries to say something, and they're all like, shut the fuck up, oh! Guido. His name's actually Guido, too. <laughs> okay. So uh, this this mayor used to be a police officer, too. This this shit is all Damn! over the place. Is um, he RoboCop? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he is. He, the, <laughs> the next paragraph says he's RoboCop. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Half robot, half man, half Cuban, one hundred percent blue lives man. <laughs> uh, I, I, I honestly, and we think... ain't racist toward no police officers down here, except the Italian ones. <laughs> uh, I think like this is a good move. I think every yeah. city government should be, and and some people are probably like, oh, it's just virtue signaling and stuff. But like, I don't know. This like it's maybe if we if we addressed. The, the racism that clearly exists, it would be easier to talk about it well, and do you, things about it. If you don't do things like this because it might be virtue singla- signaling, then you're also doing nothing, mm-hmm. which is worse than... Well, it's a step in the right direction, right. and eventually, hopefully, you know, if more cities adopt this stance and then it becomes uh, maybe nationally on a federal level, we can apologize for... Have we apologized for slavery and shit? And the civil I, right, I like doubt it. If we haven't, we need to. Isn't do that, that fucked up? But we need yeah. to move towards that, and then also reparations to yes. the black community, because that's that should be the end goal with it. Yeah. Well, the Native American community first, I would say. I would say both. You know, I mean. Yeah, both. That's. I don't think it's an either stance, or thing. I, I think you know, and also probably uh, Japanese family, Japanese American families oh, that were God, affected yeah. by internment camps. And then like, last of all, the Italians. Just yeah. no, give them some free dry give pasta. Them that's all they. I just think the suburban whites need to be recognized for all the pain they're going through mm-hmm. too. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like this is just a really hard thing to swallow. That I do I, love, uh, I do love an Italian American guy. Like all these, all these groups of people that were misaligned get some kind of reparations, and then just the Italians being like, "All we're saying is we want free breadsticks at Pizza Hut. That's all we want." Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, free yeah, breadsticks. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we'll just wrap this up. Like, good on. Good on Tampa. Also, apologizing yeah, for racism. Yeah. Somebody just, just stepping up and doing it, I, I, <laughs> like going for it. I think I, I think hey, it's bullshit. I'm sorry that... for racism too. Why not? <laughs> we cool podcast. Yeah, we're sorry. For sorry racism. for racism. Yeah. And in particular, <sighs> yeah, uh, sorry. I'm sorry that Tampa Bay was so racist. Mm-hmm. Nice. There you go. Well, I was gonna say I think it's <laughs> it's bullshit that people complain about virtue signaling because what you're saying is. You're complaining about somebody pointing out an obvious positive thing. Yeah. But what's wrong with throwing out positive shit more often? Yeah. Well, like reaffirming these things and reminding people that, yeah, we should think this way. But, I don't see the... Well, they just don't see it as, like, you're doing enough. You know what I mean? Like, just saying, like, yeah, we're sorry that, like, we enslaved you. Like, that's... You're not doing anything, really, by just saying sorry. But Grant's point... Is, you need to start a podcast, yeah. <laughs> and then you're doing yeah, something right. when you're saying. But like, if you don't, then you, if you don't start do a Patreon. anything, then you really aren't doing anything. Yeah, so like, well, that's that's what I'm saying. But like, also, it, the more people that do it, the more influence that you have. Yep. I think the I, more. Well, the idea yeah. is normalizing these these mm-hmm. feelings and yes. these thoughts, and then we again, then we can move towards actual like reparations and trying to repay people that were. Yeah. You know, because that's sure. what should have happened long ago. Yes, is that exactly. In it's like, everybody's in denial. Like in if, like 1764. Yeah, they should have, yeah. or 1864. They should have been like, yeah, our bad. That yeah, they should have cool. been like, let's just like skip the Civil War, and I we'll just they, give you guys like uh, fucking Montana to California. How about all? <laughs> that, how about all the land that you're working on now is just yours? Cool. Ooh. Yeah. But instead, they were like, all the land you're working on now is yours, 
but it's really ours. Yeah, because like, you're still going to grow this stuff. It's your land, but it's actually It's also my land. land. Yeah. We killed Lincoln said, like, to said, make like, this happen. <laughs> I love how you said, like, Montana, whatever. Like, all that land, you just, like, give that to, you know, the freed slaves. But, like, you're going to have to kill a shitload of Native Americans. I mean, we already did that. that and that's yeah, what that I'm part saying. Was done. Like, so, there's no easy solution. No. As you know, as this podcast has obviously discovered, there's no easy solution to reparations. Yeah. You guys. This is pretty much the question we set out to answer when we started this podcast. And we did it. So. Yeah. You raised an interesting... Holy hell, twice in three weeks with we the solved knuckle it. crack? You raise an interesting point, though, in that what if you just... They just... Um, there you go, King. Like okay. any One disenfranchised... One more person does it, and I'll be able to finish. <laughs> oh. I was... Keep going, Chris. Okay, so disenfranchised. Um, but, like... Not having to pay property taxes, that's a really quick, easy thing that alleviates a lot of Well, also, I mean, with COVID, COVID has shown a lot of people that, you know, I think the government can do a lot more than what we've been saying for so long. And literally, I I feel like if you're a black American, you could literally either send that to to activism groups. You could do it that way, and then they disperse it through the black community, or literally just sending a check. Because we you know, know you like, can do that now. Yes, for yeah. like maybe, I don't know, fucking five or ten years, whatever the fuck this it is. is. But people say like, oh, it's not even realistic. It's not. That's not a realistic thing to budget. Well, and com- it's like, you know what else isn't realistic? <laughs> 20 years of war in Afghanistan, but yeah. somehow we're fucking doing that. Right. Like, yeah. that costs a trillion dollars a year. Get, just... Just give one trillion to the black people. Like that's all. Yeah. I'm saying. Like maybe more, but like a trillion is a good start. Yeah. Well, and it's like it, it. The problem is, is like when you try to like get close to that line by being like, hey, let's maybe like spend less in the Middle East on war and bombs and stuff. Like and none. Maybe, like, take, maybe. Yeah. Would be sick. But none? then like immediately that like the people on the other side are like, you don't respect the troops. We were we were gonna vote on uh, same sex marriage in Minnesota. But there were a lot of people that, and I also it why me nuts. why was it vote no? That always pissed me off. Yeah, it, it, it was like, honestly it was a strategy to try and fuck because it's with the confu- it, as make it as confusing as possible. Yep, and then the status quo can stay the same for longer. I Not literally that. convinced fifteen people because they were like, "Hey, you voting yes?" And I was like, "No, what the fuck are you talking about?" And they're like, "What? You don't support gay marriage?" I was like, "No, dude." It sounds read- like you don't support gay marriage. <laughs> read the book. or reading. Yeah, read the thing. You guys make sure you fucking vote no. Yeah. That's well, when they, I first saw those stickers, like on bumper stickers, mm-hmm. you know, I was like, God, there's a lot of assholes in this community. Yeah. I don't yeah. know that I'm cool with this. A lot of Obama voters do not want gay marriage <laughs> to go through. This is kind of shocking. So they're kind of progressive, <laughs> but very Obama ish. Yeah. <laughs> there were pre 2012. <laughs> yeah. There were people that were saying, well, what? But now people are going to start marrying animals and children? It's Which, like no, that shit's not gonna happen. Yeah. And it, but it's also happen. like take yeah. the children out of the equation. Animals, why not? Children. Yeah, that's already <laughs> been happening insane. in Utah. Yeah, what? or uh, Montana. Animals, I think. yeah, and children. Yeah, yeah, they have very young wives in some of those Whatever. Mormon enclaves. Anyways. Which, Anyways. like, get them early. <laughs> all uh, that, all that to say, I though, will not have you misalign my <laughs> my mom's heritage. <laughs> we we've been able to show with this pandemic that like these extremes that people thought were gonna it then opens the floodgates for these other things doesn't fucking happen yeah Yeah. so if you do those other things i think the same thing the the worst case scenario is not going to fucking happen well it's aristocracy and bureaucracy are the two biggest problems right now it's just like all the people who are that's why you need to vote for joe jorgensen uh, Mm. a woman who has literally no fucking chance at winning the 2020 presidential election i've been seeing so many fucking libertarians like i'm not gonna vote against my morals and it's like you don't have morals you idiot <laughs> that's the whole thing yeah. about yeah, libertarianism you're ambiguous. <laughs> there, that's who you are yeah. your uh, libertarianism is amoral yeah that's how yeah. it works you're just it's a republican just, like, with an extra step place. in there yeah the marketplace decides well, if you're if Republican with exists. an extra chromosome. <laughs> oh, nice. Listen, sorry, that was ableist bullshit. <laughs> wow, very moral. Okay, too. we do. Have do you want to apologize? For, well, you did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, we got to wrap this shit up. Yeah, we'll do a listener team. apology. Yeah, and then uh, get the fuck out of here. Um, so, what was the one that I was gonna pull up? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Here we go. So we've been. Um, 
We've been talking a lot about Declan Brown and the Back Pocket Podcast. The Idiot this, King. Yes, the Idiot Kings of Boatcella. Super spreader event, I'm sure. Um, death toll's <laughs> got to be in the hundreds by now from uh, Boatcella. <laughs> Real shame. Uh, but... It sounds like our message has been getting out there because somebody has expressed... I wonder if they knew Declan before this or... I'm pretty sure I know who this is based on an Instagram comment that I saw oh, that hell yeah. mirrored some of these same You're going to have to tell me after the it's, pod. It's public, so I'll show you. Well, don't, um, don't out him on the pod, though. Well, I just did. It doesn't. <laughs> I, I think it's okay. It's a public comment. <laughs> but the uh, apology is anonymous. This so person wants this... Okay, yes, very true. Uh I'd like to apologize to Declan Brown's parents for how often I wonder what went wrong in his childhood. Also for the turn, the person he turned out as, if that wasn't their fault. Which, honestly, we've seen videos of his dad on his Instagram. His dad seems like a positive, good guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, uh, sorry to Declan's parents for how this all happened. We don't know how it happened. An apology to all the grandparents who will die because their shitty grandkids wanted to get drunk on a boat. <laughs> Another apology to Declan's two front teeth for whatever issues they've had in the past. Hopefully one day they can resolve their differences and come back together. God, just fucking vile. Can't wait for Gondapalooza 2021, y'all. Hell yeah, dog. <laughs> this time we're going to have more structure. Yeah. Yeah. This time we'll we'll make it on the river. We'll actually have it well, on. Well, let's not promise something we can't deliver Yeah, on. we don't fucking know that. Okay. Um, yeah. Pretty... Uh, Pretty cut and dry here. Scathing this person apology. Does not like I've Declan. never heard of a scathing apology before. Yeah, yeah. This is easily the most scathing, mm -hmm. uh, vitriolic, mm. anger fueled apology. This is what I imagine Tampa Bay apologizing like. Mm -hmm. Oh, we we are yeah. sorry for all our racist tendencies <laughs> and everything we did bad. <laughs> Boo-hoo! <laughs> sorry! It's like having to say sorry to your brother so that you guys can st still go get ice cream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Apologize to your brother. I'm sorry that I systematically sat on him and spit in his mouth <laughs> for years and years. <laughs> That's it, why he's a sub now. I, do you, you guys don't know Declan? No, I think I met him once at uh, Crane. Okay, care to hop in on this at all? You wanna you wanna shit on him a little bit? I don't. I'll know go him for him. it. I'll take the lead. Fuck you, Declan and I, Bocella. I don't. Why know not? Well <laughs> oh, sure. also, Declan is. Uh... I'll I'll apologize to his two front teeth. <laughs> I'm sorry to them two motherfuckers, dog. Actually, Declan, uh, we are not sponsored by this company, but Smile Direct is a great option. Uh, easy, affordable payments. Uh, I think it's a four month program. You wear a retainer for 22 hours a day for four months. They will ship them out to you for free. All you got to do take pictures of your teeth and pay them money. It is less expensive than Invisalign or braces. In fact, <laughs> I'm a user of it. What are you doing Smile right Direct. now? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to You're get just doing a free ad? Yeah, I'm trying to get them by showing what a good job we could do. Okay. All right. So we should we'll I'll drop in a picture of Declan's two front teeth. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's good to see that um our rhetoric is filtering down into the fan base too. Um because we're going galaxy brain. We've here. we've noticed a theme in these these apologies that a lot of them are just like making fun of the people we make fun of on this show. Awesome. Like, everybody's coming after Tommy and the apologies. <laughs> I'm just glad it's not us. I know. We don't have to do it. We're outsourcing our uh You know what's funny, ridicule. too, is I, I, for the most part, I have the dumbest takes. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that more people aren't coming after me. Yeah, but it's that sweet, sweet voice. You sweet, know, you Trojan sweet. horse him in with that luscious. It's those washboard <laughs> apes. <again. laughs> You got that sweet voice too, Chris. <laughs> it's all the missing teeth that allows me to let out your sweetness. You, you know what's amazing? That voice is like cartoonish, but would be like a good country singer voice. I feel like like bluegrass, more bluegrass. Yeah, I'm gonna find my baby, gonna hold her tight, yeah, gonna grab nice. myself some wet ass pussy tonight. <laughs> Cardi B, <laughs> Megan the <Thee> Stallion. <laughs> <laughs> Megan oh. the Stallion is an awesome name. Dude, so great. fucking awesome. I saw people like there's like a take on Twitter a couple days ago that was like I thought it was Megan the Stalin. I thought she was like a Marxist or something. I think it's the Stallion because she's is. saying like she's thick. She's built like a fucking stallion. And like mm. people were like 
going after like her name, but it's like no, that's her name, and it also it's a great name. I yeah. love that there's two Catchy. e's in the that that. You one. think you're supposed to say the? Yeah, oh. probably. Right. And yeah, that's why might... I love it so much because like making the stallion. Yeah, the mother, she the stallion. The motherfucking stallion. Yeah. Uh, sorry <laughs> to, um, let's see here. Sorry to all the grandkids that will die because your shitty grandkids wanted to get drunk on a boat. Well, the grandparents. Yeah. Sorry We're not to the apologizing to the grandkids. No. Apology, sorry you fucking killed your grandparents, you dumb assholes. Yeah. Actually, you should apologize for for killing your grandparents. Dude, how awesome would it be if we get like someone who went to Bocella to come in and apologize Dude, that would be... for going to Bocella? All right. If you we went to Bocella... We won't be mean to you either. We'll genuinely just apologize for you because I would like to make this happen. That would be yeah. incredible. Yeah, I don't know if we're like wildly misreading uh, Back Pockets fan base uh, if they like what we're doing or if they... Nah, who gives a fucking shit? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, okay, well, that, that wraps up that listener apology. Yeah. Um, good one. Yeah, that was a great... Good one. You apology. are doing the heavy lifting for us on yeah, that one. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't really have to be funny on that one. No. It's great. Um, yeah, that's. Do you guys have uh, anything uh, back or <laughs> back pocket podcast? <laughs> Dude, that, absolutely. Yeah. Well, do you we, guys have any anything you need to apologize for while you're here? Can I demand an apology? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You can. I need an apology from amoxicillin for getting rid of my sinus infections, but giving me diarrhea for <laughs> fifteen years. Oh, oh, buddy. Yeah. That is not a solution. That mm-hmm. is a. Step. They just they they moved it to a different part of your body. Yeah. Yeah, not now sweet. you have an anus infection. Yeah, not cool. So I'm I'm uh, allergic Sanus to those drugs. Anus infection. I'm allergic to penicillin and whatnot. Are you really? really? Yeah, I get a rash. So it took care of my sinus infection. Huge rash that over is, my whole body. By the way, this is what Grant opens uh, when he's meeting people at parties. Mm-hmm. That's what he opens with. He goes, "Hey, I'm Grant. Uh, I can't take penicillin. I'm allergic so. to penicillin. So if we fuck later." That's like you that's your that's your like uh, interesting thing about you mm-hmm. like in class. You're like, yeah. What's up? My name's Grant. Uh, my body can't handle penicillin, so if I get a cold, I'll die. <laughs> you do not know what penicillin is. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Fucking tell me, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay, we are in <laughs> we're in agreement on that one. Chris. It's sort of the clap, right? Isn't that what you take penicillin mm-hmm. for? Yeah, Ryan just thinks the clap is a cold. <laughs> Ryan thinks gonorrhea is a cold. Yeah, I got an <laughs> ass cold again. <laughs> my, my, my penis keeps sneezing. <laughs> sneezing all I over. got a runny penis. <laughs> yeah, Which I gotta... is kind of what it is. Yeah, it is. It's a cold for your penis. I keep, I keep soaking hey, my Ryan, penis in NyQuil. You're more right than us. Well done. Again. God, it makes me wanna... Most of the times you think I'm wrong, I'm actually a lot more right than you think I am. That's not true. We can't let that statement <laughs> just can't let I'm that a lot statement more ring right out. Than I am wrong sometimes. <laughs> so a lot of the time I'm wrong, I'm right. If it ain't wrong if it's right. All right, now I'm on your side again. You you've won me back over. That sweet, sweet Yeah. Mid it's the, it's the voice, baby. That's that's like Batman. I won't I won't teach you how to win, but I'll teach you how to not lose. This is how I win. I'm fucking Batman. I'm the fucking Batman. I, I got, I'm fucking so scared of bats, dude. <laughs> I fucking a bunch of them like flew up at me when I was a little kid, My. and they 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 flew out of a well. And now I think that's what other people. My, my main goal in this world is to kill bats. What about a guy who's like heights man? <laughs> he's just like he's like he's just not a, wears stilts. Yeah, he's not a height man, but he's just like. When I was a kid, I looked over a giant balcony, and it fucking it made me feel really weird. And now I dress up like a really tall guy. My parents brought me to the Grand Canyon, and I just cried in the car the whole time. I wouldn't get out of the car. I was too afraid. <laughs> but now I've been molded by my fucking. Fear of heights, <laughs> and I'm four feet tall. I've become small. Uh, also, I'm Danny DeVito. <laughs> Dude, Danny DeVito is heights man. <laughs> that would be awesome. I'm we- in a I'm in a rap group, and I'm the guy who go- just says, "Oh yeah, fuck yeah, dude." <laughs> tell him, tell him, not again, <laughs> not again. Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, oh shit, what shit, the- fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Put him up, put him up. Yeah. Now put him down, drop oh. it down. Put him up, drop it down. Flocka. Heights, man. Heights, man. 
in the paint. <laughs> Who would be the villain for Heights, man? Uh, tiny, Bungie. <laughs> it's a tiny one. Bungie is a good oh. villain name. Bungie. Or oh, keep your things in place! <laughs> 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 Put your things in your trailer, and I will carry them on the highway, but in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> I will make the cars behind you very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I Go just ahead, used... <laughs> put that shovel in your truck that doesn't have an end thing that, you know, can stop it from just flying out. This will definitely hold a 60-foot ladder in place. <laughs> <laughs> I strike again! Heights man, you fucking asshole. Bungie is just responsible for every death and final destination. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm not starting to fray. <laughs> Bungie and his sidekick seatbelt. <laughs> seatbelt, come. We need to keep things in place, or do we? <laughs> We need to Gee give. Gee <laughs> Yeah, I've never seen a villain with a sidekick. Yeah. It's like a, a boy wonder. Har Harley Quinn. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, she's not. A I mean, boy. they're I fucking consider, though. So. I consider her more of a girl boss, actually. So. Oh, nice. Yes, like Queen. Megan the Stallion. Exactly. Full circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like. But just... Megan the Stallion is like a. She would be the the hero. You know, she's mm -hmm. not a fucking side. Side well, kick. her side piece is pony pussy, and they just <laughs> walk around twerking, and that's there. Megan the Stallion would also be a great villain name. Yeah, mm -hmm. or hero name. Yeah, I'm picturing a hero like um, Captain Marvel, or whatever. Yeah, but she, mm -hmm. I, I'd say she's like a, like girl a villain because she's Another like bad, boss. but like with two Ds. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And she's yeah. thick with two Cs. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Yeah, Duck. can we do this with a whole alphabet? She's Aardvark with two A's. What is it? What the fuck? She's well, uh, that's the only word I could think of. I was gonna say ass with she's three Hobbit. S's. Hobbit with two B's, three B's. Would it be three B's? I would say two T's. Okay. Hobbit. 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 Doesn't Hobbit already Hobbit. have two T's? No, it already has two B's. I mean, yeah. 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 Whoops. Aardvark has three A's. It yeah, but it starts with two, right? <laughs> God. But, a... but if we're playing the game, you would have to add another. So it would have oh, to be yeah. Aardvark with four A's. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of A's. And Hobbit with three B's. That's some little-ass batteries. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go back to Talking that. about wet-ass pussy, how about little-ass batteries? Triple A? <laughs> Quadruple A. <laughs> Bungie. Bungie. <laughs> You're way too high up there. <laughs> don't. Don't. Stop doing that. Ah, hype man! <laughs> you can never stop me from being really high up in the air. But then low really quickly, but then back Ooh, to high. I'm going up you and I'm go going down. Just come up here and get me. Oh, look at me. Ooh. <laughs> Just stay in one spot. God damn you, fucker. Stay in one spot, you fucking son of a bitch. Ah, you'll never catch me. I almost got your ankle Look there. at me, I'm I swinging sideways <laughs> now. All of his, all of his failures. Failures come from that like Looney Tunes moment where the rubber band gets yeah. stretched too yeah. far, and then he looks at the camera and blinks twice, uh -huh. and then shoots into. <laughs> and then there's just like a cloud shaped like yeah. him where he was. Yeah. How far can I stretch? <laughs> Damn, dude, Heitzman is a fucking dumbass. I, I think that's what we're finding. Screams. Too. He's Heitzman is just like Road or it, would it be Roadrunner or Wiley Coyote? Yeah, yeah there you uh -huh. go. Yeah. So wait, well, Heitzman is he's the villain now. He's the bad guy. Yeah, I know. We switched it. Yeah. So wait, Bungie's the good guy now? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Anti-hero much? <laughs> uh, wow. There we go. Yeah. We had a, or I had a, a premise a couple of weeks ago talking about how uh, you do like a, a comic book series or a movie where uh, Batman is the reason that uh, the COVID-19 got over here because oh, yeah. he ran out of bats in his cave. <laughs> so he had to outsource and went to... <laughs> <laughs> To a wet market, yeah. <laughs> just Batman walking through. How much is this one? Is that a flying fox? You I do there? love to imagine uh, Alfred like explaining it to Batman. Mm -hmm. He's like, Master Bruce. <laughs> it turns out getting those bats was a real bad idea. Turns out, I don't know what you need to keep the cave of bats. You're afraid of them. <laughs> right next to the right next to the snakes. Uh, it's just a bad idea. It doesn't make bat the size of a grapefruit. <laughs> I mean, you really—it's a biological disaster. <laughs> you Mr. really Batman, think about it. The you thief know, had just been throwing them. <laughs> You're afraid of bats, so I don't know why you want them in the cave with you. Because, like, 
you would think like, oh, you probably I'm wouldn't want power. any pets. Or even have a cave. Why, why, why even have a place where they like to live? Mr. Bruce, you're so rich. Why? Why you go underground, Mr. Bruce? Mr. Bruce! <laughs> <laughs> okay. What if, what if Alfred's been, like, siphoning money from the Wayne Foundation the mm -hmm. whole time, and that's why he's been sticking around? Hell yeah, dude. I, I just can't seem to get over the fact that I've been getting all this money for free for so long. <laughs> I've watched you grow up, and I don't give a living shit about you. It's like, what fake, about... Fake my own death and go to the Caymans. What about uh, <laughs> Alfred, but he's like... He's Bruce Wayne's hype man, you know. And he's like, <laughs> Alfred is hype man. He's like, he's like, yeah, Alfred's <laughs> hype man. He's like, Master Bruce, it's time to wane on them. <laughs> it's time to wane on the beat, Master make, Bruce. Make it wane. <laughs> oh damn, son, where'd you find this? <laughs> Drop the bat. Like There'll come the a day when Alfred no longer needs Batman, but still needs Master Wayne for. Financial purposes, and also just to have a friend. <laughs> Having a like a microbiology weapons uh, laboratory is actually does sound very Batman like. It's something he would do, yeah. Like the way he used all the the yeah. phones to triangulate yeah. everybody. It's, like, it's the only way to stop crime is to introduce syphilis it's into the whole city. It's the only way to watch people in the shower. I've mm. developed this. We can use everybody's cell phone to triangulate. Seeing tits and ass and, and balls Master in the Bruce, shower. That sounds like a huge misappropriation of your power. <laughs> if if you put glasses on, you kind of look like Commissioner Gordon. Oh yeah, oh, like fuck. classic Commissioner yeah, Gordon. Dude. Okay, that's a sick look, dude. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. You're I also I would like to apologize because this morning I woke up and I thought of uh, you on stage and the way your hair looks, and I thought. Um, Grant looks like a Cabbage Patch kid that went to Harvard. Hell yeah. So and you're then, apologizing for a private thought you had right. that was mean. An intrusive yeah. thought. I but apologize. you had to vocalize it. You could right. have just Which skipped the, the most apology. Minnesota way to, to insult somebody. Yeah, I could have just skipped the uh, the statement and the apology. <laughs> but uh, okay. yeah, you're forgiven. Listen, <laughs> we're at an hour and a half. Now. Yeah, we're we're gonna. Oh, have, sorry. Yeah, we'll we'll wrap. Um, but before we get out of here. What were what were you gonna say? Are you just trying to? I, wrap I this just like I, I just like to tell people how long we've been doing the podcast. Mm -hmm. For we're the at, we're for at the an listener, hour minute hour minutes thirty. Yeah, I know it's it's always a mystery for the listeners because there's no information on the phone about no. how long these things. You are. have been listening for one hour and thirty <laughs> minutes to th four of the dumbest people in the world. I take exception to that. Yeah, your phone will self destruct in five, <laughs> four, three. Two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dog. Good job, Krauth. Such a good bit. Holy yeah, shit. Fucking All tofer, right, guys. Dude. Great. What a, what a better note. Um, Plug your podcast. Tell us uh, where you can find you. What, what, why, why, why we listen. Uh, why we dude, listen. The dude why we listen. <laughs> why we listen. New segment. Uh, why we listen. Why we listen, dudes. That's I don't know why, but why we listen sounds like something Tampa Bay would say. Uh, I'll tell you why we listen. We listen to the black community. And we say, okay. You're sorry Good. for enslaving. All right. All right. If you say so, we're done being racist now. And I guess we're cool with the Jews now, too. <laughs> well, we kind of listen to them. And we said, all right, we'll listen to you, too. And we we'll listen to a different uh, group that's been, uh, you know, <laughs> well, yeah, well, I was really listening, but I'm saying I was. What we're really trying to say is muzzle top. <laughs> I was only half listening. I'm sorry. I was looking at my phone. There was something on Twitter with the Tennessee coach. He said he still wants to play, even though, you know, he wants to play football, even though coronavirus. But we just got to be careful. That's it, you know. This is a character. I mean, this works. Yeah, you it's could, fun. It you is could fun, do dude. this. We've had, yeah. a, we've had good characters this episode. Yeah. Um, like Bungie, hype man, this fucking guy. It's, they all sound like Fred your Durst. characters. <laughs> Fred, that's, 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 that's that Fred character Durst. is Fred Durst. Yeah. <laughs> we've, yeah. we've named him. Uh, so, I quit stand up and I got into character <laughs> work. <laughs> I like Sorry. how you're like, uh, okay, we got to wrap this up, and then you're just la relaunching well, into I'm, all of Minnesota go buying the fuck out of this Now podcast. I'm heating back up, baby. <laughs> you can't stop the gravy train. <laughs> it's slick. And thick. And thick. With two <laughs> Cs. Back. Wow. Yep. Sorry. Uh, so, Making the Dude Absolutely the gravy Podcast. Train. 
okay. uh, features Chris and I. Uh, it's uh, it's mostly just us like talking about Pokemon and Batman and our penises and you know. It's other two things. best friends expressing their love for each other as well as comedy. Yes, and our mental health stuff. Uh, we've got weekly segments. So uh, there's the uh, there's the brought to you buys. Uh, which you can email us at dude absolutely podcast at gmail or send us a message on Facebook at dude absolutely podcast to uh, include your brought to you buys for our brought to you by segment, which is like a, a fake sponsorship. Correct. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have one? I was can you do say, one I right now? Give you an example. Let's bust one off. <clears throat> do it for We Cool though. Okay. Oh. oh, okay. This episode of the We Cool podcast is brought to you by Dirty Jameson bottles. Clean them up. Cut them open and use them as a vase. <laughs> okay, I got one. I got one. This episode of the We Cool Podcast has been brought to you by Tampa Bay's History of Racism. Yeah. This week's episode of the We Cool <laughs> Podcast is brought to you by Tampa Bay's Apologizing for Racism. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry about the racism. We're so sorry. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops, this, did I racism again? Sorry. Chris had you you had one, I don't know, it was like three weeks ago. Had to be. Maybe more than that. But the the funeral home one. Oh yeah. fucking. That it was, was like, like the first one. Craig's uh wild and wacky funeral home. <laughs> <laughs> kids kids get in free. <laughs> yeah. It was, so anyway, submit your uh brought to you buys to us at uh, Dude Absolutely on Facebook. Uh and then you know, the last segment we do is uh, test that premise, and uh, we just bring a new premise every week. Yeah. Because uh, we can't do comedy right now, so it's, you know, fun for us to at least fun. do that. Um, and then, Chris, you can talk about the rest of your Yeah, we got, I mean, so all, all of our podcasts are on the Duck Duck Grey Duke channel. Which we were just, Ryan and I were yeah. on that yep. a couple weeks ago. Very fun show. Fucking Great show. hilarious. You guys were so funny. Thanks, man. a fun time, man. Thanks for having us. You actually inspired Kim and I to do the talking at the same time thing we did it to i don't know how some, we could uh probably encourage you to do that i just talking at the same, same time, time i mean it's not really, really that much of a bit it's a smart thing to bit, do but it's, it's also like pretty cool pretty cool it would be it's bad. Really bad it's funnier it's if funny with what we're saying the same things, things about, about megan says <laughs> nascar in particular that was pretty good. <laughs> Just an example of how yeah. great that bit And can how be. in tune we yeah, are. I was going to say, you guys seem so connected. This mm -hmm. is why we do improv exercises mm -hmm. beforehand. Mm -hmm. I do push ups, Grant runs. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so Duck Duck, Grey Duke, for all of the shows, there's the not. We cover everything from uh, addiction to friendship to mental health stuff. So there's all kinds of shit on there. We're on YouTube, every podcast platform available. And so those are all under Duck Duck Gray Duke. Yep, Correct. Duck Duck Gray yep. Duke is in the college. Duke yeah. is in my last name. Duke is in the best fucking last name to ever exist. Wow, beautiful. Uh, yeah. So the the the, <laughs> the the beauty of like listening to it on on iTunes and stuff too is is like you're gonna get an assortment of different material like every episode. So like oh yeah, so every one. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So every single week we have three episodes that are. Released. Hell yeah, you guys are turning out so much content. It's crazy because yeah, we do and one it's episode all a week. Very like, high quality. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, dog. I mean, yeah. Dude, not so anonymous is actually. Quick story. Like three weeks ago, Chris was like, dude, we reached a thousand listeners this month. And I was like, fuck, <laughs> fuck yeah, dude, yeah, you man. did it. And he's like, no, we did it. And then I came over to his house and we're recording in like on air. He's like, well, actually, none of our episodes are in the top 15. <laughs> and I was like, hey, guy, fuck off. <laughs> so shitty. Uh, yeah. Great plug. Great plug for yeah, the podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So listen in, because we could use it. Also, my ego needs it. Yeah, well, take a look at yourselves, because one in seven adults in Minnesota have a DUI or a DWI, so you're all fucking alcoholics. Or a big D-I-C-K, am I right? <laughs> so listen yeah, in. I think that's four out of four in this demographic. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Yeah, I, know. Okay, I got a fucking tiny little, Get it. tiny little thing that barely swings. If I sit down and pee, I pee on my nutsack. It's... <laughs> I don't dangle, I dingle. <laughs> I got a tiny little cock, and I'm not afraid to say it. I'm the head of the Tiny Cock Association, God. based out of Chicago. And I would love 
for them to make hot dogs the size of my cock. I don't know about you guys, but I always piss into an empty apples mats jug. <laughs> Every it. time I pee, it's like I'm taking a freaking drug test. Because <laughs> it's a tiny little Dixie cup. I like the way it warms my hands up in the winter. <laughs> the windy city, sometimes it blows on my shoe. <laughs> Chicago, home of wind and a bunch of Dixie cups with piss in it. Yeah, I call it shit Chicago <laughs> because I piss so much. Yeah, the I, I stays wish I could warm shit. longer than the pee does. <laughs> this goes right back to the original shit and piss factory that we were all talking about. Holy cow! Talk Five about going full circle. <laughs> this city makes the Pope wanna piss on the street. <laughs> Real problem with the old uh, shit and piss factories right next to the the uh, sausage factory down there. Which if the lo- delivery drivers get confused, then you end up with you know a bunch of shit sausages in your yeah, cup you got some, You got some freaking Teamster guys working on there. You get the shit contaminated in the piss, and then even in, contaminated in the sausage. <laughs> We're Somebody's actually squeezing your dick as you were talking. The guy who thinks contaminated is intaminated. <laughs> yeah, they got a big intamination over there. They intaminate. I got an intamination from having sex with eight prostitutes. We're working on anal tampons for when you have diarrhea. <laughs> anal tamp. This this episode. That's my of new legal <laughs> podcast. This is brought to you by. This episode. That's I used to always do the sports center. No, guy I like voice. that voice. This episode of We Cool Podcast is brought. To you by anal tampons <laughs> and Oreos <laughs> and being a better dad. They're just Quit calling your son a pussy and just make him a sandwich. <laughs> this episode of the Week Old Podcast is brought to you by Bob's Butt Plug Emporium. If it's not on ourselves, it's in ourselves. <laughs> All righty, fuck. <laughs> yeah. That's a good place to wrap it, it up. It is. Guys, uh, thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank, thanks yeah, for really having us, man. Uh, Alex Petra, Chris Duke of the Dude Absolutely podcast on the Duck Duck Grey Duke podcast feed. Go check them out. And I'm so excited to say this. But yeah. For Grant Winkles, uh, Tommy Bayer working at the Piss and Shit Factory. He's going to make Piss Boy one day. Chris Duke and Alex Petra, I've been Ryan Call, and this has been the Weequel Podcast.